So regular viewers may remember that we did a profile on the X350 Jaguar XJ, this exact example in fact. This particular car has done the rounds. It was a project car in Classics Monthly magazine, Jaguar World magazine, and a lot of maintenance work was carried out in that time. And then we used it for quite a lot of editorial features. It was uh, part of a big road trip up to Scotland where we took to the scenic roads of the uh, NC500 and the editor of Jaguar World, Paul Walton, even drove it all the way down to Monaco, which was quite an exceptional drive. But having done all of that stuff, we kind of reached the end of the road with it and we were debating about what to do with the project car after that. And basically the choice was simple, either just sell it there and then or keep it and maybe take it to the next level. Rightly or wrongly, we landed on the latter that we would, did want to keep it. There were a number of reasons for that. Based on the first video, it seemed that there's quite a lot of love out there for the X350. An early X350 is now becoming increasingly rare. It came out in 2003, so the majority of them are on an 03 plate. So this being a 52 car probably denotes that it was a very early manufacturer and the chassis number backs that up as well. We think it's probably one of the first four to 500 cars ever made. So we were kind of at this sort of crossroads, like I say, and we thought, well, why not do a bit more to it? So I took it under my wing for about a month or so of 2020. Got to sort of know about it, got to know what its foibles were. I took it into a local independent Jaguar specialist. The air suspension warnings had come up and it turned out that it was uh, a slightly soggy damper which uh, once replaced and then the system reset, the warning has, uh, has gone away. But then there was one last problem and that was the paintwork because although these X350s are all aluminium and in theory shouldn't rust and in fact they, they don't, there is this problem with the paint reacting with the aluminium surface and you get this very unsightly paint bubbling that goes on. Again, we decided, do we dare invest in a, in a full respray? You know, and because of the rarity and perhaps the sort of historical significance of this car, we decided that we would indeed go for it. Economically, it made absolutely no sense whatsoever, but maybe longer term it will, I don't know. Our erstwhile colleague, Rob Hawkins, jumped on a train from Leeds to come down to Peterborough where the X350 was situated to collect it. But then of course the world turned upside down in March 2020 and uh, the car sat bone idle. It's now been over a year and a half since we dropped that car off for its respray. But I'm glad to say it's now back and looking resplendent, I have to say. We should probably cut to Rob who can tell us in person just exactly what's happened in the last year and a half with this car. So back in 2017, we bought this car, ran it through Jaguar World magazine and did everything to it. Spent a lot of time fixing it up, repairing, servicing it, which was all featured in the magazine then. Then fast forward to 2020, in January, February time of that year, uh, we decided let's go do a respray. Started shopping around, settled on Elite here to do the respray. And in March 2020, we started stripping the car just at the point when COVID started to kick off. And lo and behold, we got one day's worth of work out before the entire country went into lockdown. That was then put on hold for 14 months. It'd been partly stripped and it was put away and left dry for that 14 months. And then we got going on it again. So everything came off, bonnet, boot, doors, glass. All the glass came out, windscreen, race screens. That was new clips, new glass afterwards. Counted at roughly 150 to 200 hours of labor for preparing it put it in their booth for spraying it, all the repairs that needed to do, there's a few dings in the aluminium, but generally speaking it went well. Bear in mind it's an aluminium shell so there wasn't much corrosion. The rest of the job was basically a case of doing new seals and you know, fitting new glass and complete respray along with the wheels as well. got an early model here surely this is one that in 20 30 years time we'll be looking back and thinking wow we did the right job I mean this this is a car to keep surely this is a classic of the future so there you have it he's done a fantastic job and I think you'll agree that the car is looking fantastic it's still not perfect there's still some things to do obviously the car sat around for a long time so there's clearly signs that it could do with uh, a bit of TLC. Headlights, they've started to fog up the way they do when they get to a certain age, so they, those could do with a, uh, a polish up. It's about 25 degrees today, and I'm absolutely cooking on the account that the air conditioning isn't working. That needs a regas. And crucially after that, I think we just need to make sure we use it regularly, because 
although it's got 142,000 miles on the clock, it's in fine fetter, it really is, and um, it doesn't really want for much. So all we need to do now is to, uh, I think, keep using it. You know, use it for what it was designed for, soaking up long miles with a plom. We'll no doubt do further updates on it in due course, so uh, do watch this space.